Hello, this is Brian. I am in the San Bernardino National Forest on this beautiful May 30th, 2021. It's a Sunday afternoon. Just been driving around the mountains today, trying to find spots to do videos and, and stuff. Well, let's see. Trying to see what kind of interesting stuff I can get into today. Trying to see if I can get through here in the first place. I don't know. Trying to get to the other side. Nice rich conifer forest over there. And this little, yeah, it looks like I can get right through here if I can step over this. Just want to see what kind of interesting things I can find around here. There's a little rivulet coming through here. I don't know if this is Barton Creek or what they call it. This little area here. the other side and get to the conifers. Huh. Seems to be cordon off over here. Ah, oh, drats. <sighs> Man. I thought I was going to get into some, some beautiful forest over here, but there's a big old barbed wire fence over here. Drats. I'm obviously not going to cross it, but I just want to see what kind of stuff I can see. Ooh, the soil's loose over here. Oh, man. I was hoping to get over there. Oh. It's beautiful over here, that's for sure. Oh, man. I could have made a short, nice short cross-country video. I guess not. I don't know. What's over there? What kind of land this is. But I'm not going to trespass. So I'm just parked. Just down over that way. So I know on this side here, I'm just a little, I'm a little below 8,000 feet, probably like 7,700 feet. The saw a wall of lodgepole, lodgepole and limber pines on this side of the highway. I was gonna go check them out, get my first uh, lodgepole limber pine exposure of 2021. I guess it's kind of not in the cards from over on this point of view, but. A beautiful Jeffrey pine white fir this is predominantly the trees over here definitely kind of high for uh, Pacific ponderosa pine and we got a lot of willows rabbit brush so this is a very pretty area of the San Bernardino mountains you drive by in October these willows are lit up in golden yellow driven past this area Many, many, many times. So, we're just, we're not that far underneath the, the subalpine belt. We're in the upper, they call it the Montane Conifer Forest. The main, I also consider this the upper yellow pine belt, especially. Uh, with the presence of Jeffrey pine being one of the species of yellow pine grown here. And we're on slightly drier side. I mean, going up on that side, you're going to run into more single leaf pinion and Sierra juniper, which is more common on the drier slopes. 
But every now and then, sometimes the Sierra Junipers, Junipers Grandis, they'll uh, get established down here on uh, sometimes the shadier sides of the mountains. Big cones, definitely the presence of Jeffrey Pines. Now, I'm trying to figure out what kind of willows these are. I think they're I think they're yellow willows. I think it's Salix lutea, I think is what we got down here. That's what these appear to be, I think. Well, no, this might be a no, this looks like a royal willow, this one. But I saw some that looked a little different. With different type different uh, shape slightly different shaped leaves. Of course up up these elevations the trees' leaves haven't fully opened up yet. It's, these ones open up later in the spring than they do at the lower elevations. I know Salix lutea is found in the general vicinity. I've seen it when I hiked along the Pacific Crest Trail and I was doing a uh, Weiss a peak. I've seen that. Yeah, uh, this one. Uh, this one looks like. Yeah, this one looks like Salix lutea. The leaves are a little bit different. I think. Looks like Salix lutea. A lot of the willows are very similar to one another, so it kind of makes uh, identification. Some kind of makes identification of willows quite challenging, to be honest with you. There's some willows I just really, really have a hard time telling apart. But the Salix lutea is known to be found in this general area. And then, and we got a renegade single leaf pinion sapling right here. I said they, they can get established at the, in the shadier spots too sometimes. But this is generally Pinus jeffrey and Obvious concolor. And I'm still, I'm still wavering between variety Conclor and variety Loiana. I'm kind of leaning more towards variety Loiana being the Southern California variety, the same variety that grows up in the Sierras in the Northern California. I'm starting to lean more towards that than the Rocky Mountain variety Conclor. But people, people seem to disagree about our variety. Ron the Lander, he's a he's an expert on uh, our coniferous trees here in California. He seems to believe, or he seems to uh, pretty adamant that the variety of obvious conchlor here would be the Sierra obvious conchlor variety Loiana. Seems pretty pretty adamant about that. Michael Kaufman is another conifer expert. Considers ours to be to be a southwestern extension of Rocky Mountain white fir, which would be obvious conchlor variety conchlor. So the debate keeps on. It's sometimes it's hard to pinpoint. There are some slight morphological differences, especially in the leaves. I think you gotta look, was it, look at the stomatal lines under the needles. But I forget, uh, forget if that's actually a method of differentiating. I'm not sure if one of them is supposed to have a notched needle tip or. Some of the needle tips are not sharp. They're relatively obtuse and round. And you can see very clearly, well, not so much on camera if I zoom in a little bit, the kind of blue, the grayish color, the two stomatal lines underneath the needles. So I'm kind of curious for my own knowledge. And also, I'm just curious because I'm interested in this kind of stuff. Very interested, actually. What the... Uh, variety 
are we looking at? And there's a chance that white furs, uh, the Rocky Mountain white fur and the California white fur, the Sierra white fur, might eventually be separated into separate species. The California white fur being Abies concolor variety Loiana, and the Rocky Mountain white fur as Abies concolor, the species Abies concolor. All right, so I'm down here in the willows again. Yeah, this appears to be. This looks. Yeah, this looks like Salix lutea. This is yellow willow right here. The leaf is definitely different than a royal willow. I mean, this. The, you have to really look carefully at the leaves. Yeah, this looks like Salix lutea. I mean, there's a slight whitish on the underside, but the royal willow leaf tends to be a little bit thicker. And I think there's a little bit of pubescence underneath the Salix lasiolopus, which is the arroyo willow. I just got some... Whenever when I touched that Sierra juniper, I didn't realize uh, the resin dots were exuding. Now I got uh, juniper resin on my camera. <laughs> Smells great! But yeah, there are a lot of similar species of willows here in the San Bernardino Mountains. Salix... Salix lasiolopus is quite similar to Salix lutea, Salix scaleriana, the scalar willow, and then, yeah, you see, so you got scalar willow, a royal willow, and you also have yellow willow. They're quite similar. They're supposed to be at least another few species of willows here in the San Bernardino Mountains. I'm not sure, but potentially Salix hookeriana and Sa uh, hooker willow and potentially Salix gayeriana, gayer's willow G-E-Y-E-R-I-A-N-A -E those could potentially be species found here in the San Bernardino Mountains I don't really know what gayer willow or gayer, I don't know if you pronounce it gayer or gayer Ga I'll, I'll just say gayer gayer willow, I'm not sure what that looks like but these definitely look like the the Salix, uh, Salix luteas that I passed along the Pacific Crest Trail when I was hiking from Onyx Pass up to uh, Weissa Peak. Yes. Slightly widened, just a little bit above the middle of the leaf. And, you know, fairly, uh, fairly pointed tip. And yeah, this appears to be Salix lutea. If it isn't, and you know better, please hit me up. Let me know that, oh, this is Salix this or Salix that. I would appreciate it. But like I said, there are other willows that are very similar. Salix lasiolopus, which typically has a little bit longer, a little bit longer of a leaf, a little bit thicker of a leaf. And then uh, Salix scaleriana, I believe, is a little bit thicker, if I remember correctly. I've seen that one a few times. Uh... Salix lutea appears to have a, a thinner, shinier green leaf, lighter green, and arroyo willows can get a little bit darker. So, like I said, if you know, please let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious about that myself, but I'm pretty sure that these are yellow willows here, Salix lutea, maybe mixed in with a few other species. They don't appear to be Salix scaleriana. Salix scaleriana, again, is another similarly leafed willow found here. Uh, but the leaves tend to be more, sp almost spatula, almost spoon shaped. They're kind of broader. They're broader than a. They're brighter in profile and in proportion than uh, Salix lasiolopus to which Scalar Willow is actually quite similar. I think a little bit more similar than to these other willows. But, considering the shape of these leaves, the shape of definitely suggests Salix lutea. Beautiful shrubs. They love this little moist microclimate here. Surrounded by quite dry hillsides. But... I just wanted to see if I can get up to the lodgepole and limber pines, but I'm not going to 
go trespassing on private property to do so. As much as I love being up here and checking that out. Well, I guess I'm going to go back to the highway. Back to the car, I guess. Well, thanks for watching. This is my third video today. No real big adventure videos, but I'm on my way to the Barton Flats area to check out uh, some of the trees over there. Some of the cottonwood trees and potentially if I could find them, maybe do a video on those. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming to my channel. Thanks for watching.